Today we have with us Thomas Lamb, CEO of a newly listed uh, Myriad Uranium. Thomas, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Jen. Happy to be here. Thomas, uh, Myriad Uranium is exploring for uranium in the Tim Mersoy Basin in uh, Niger. Uh, can you please tell the audience a little bit about your background and uh, how you ended up uh, of CEO of a uh, uranium exploration company in Africa? Sure. Uh, I used to be a corporate lawyer many years ago. Um, in around 2005, I switched into junior mining, uh, became entrepreneurial. I started a few companies with some friends, um, and uh, one or two of them were successful. It's a little bit of luck with the gold price uh, going from, you know, 300 to 1900 to over that time. Um, and uh, so there I was in junior mining. Uh, um, and having having some success up until sort of 2010, 11, I moved to Europe, uh, went to London Business School where I met a, uh, a gentleman who moved to Russia and became CFO of a big a big company there. I ended up uh, being on the board of a really big gold producer. Uh, from that, I started a, a um, kind of a project generator in East Africa with two partners. Uh, that led to some interesting things, including a, a cobalt company, which uh, called M2 Cobalt, which we created, which we sold to an off, really kind of an offshoot of Glencore uh, called Gervois Global it's a Cobalt Company, which has had a, a wild ride, and I was an executive for them. And uh, so that's 11, 12 years in Africa uh, with some successes. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a friend, Pete Smith. Uh, we went to law school together. He's a really bright uh, entrepreneur. He started and put together Myriad Uranium. Uh, he went to Cambridge with some people through those contacts. He um, he ended up putting the steel together before uranium got hot a uh, year and a half ago kind of thing. I got brought in as a partner and a big shareholder. And uh, I think, I think he, Pete had in mind that I would become CEO, uh, but he didn't tell me. Um, so I was a consultant and then, uh, you know, there I was November 1st, uh, I speak French, I know Africa, uh, I've run companies and, and built them and sold them. Um, and, uh, one day, uh, I just found myself CEO November 1st. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the story of how I became, uh, I became CEO of the company. Yeah. So I've been CEO since number, November 1st. The, the company is a, and this deal is, is, is new. It's young. It was only put together and, and sealed in August, past August. Yeah. So, um, you're based in, in Nigeria. I had a look at your, uh, your property maps and you, you have some, uh, pretty, uh, significant, uh, neighbors. Um, why don't you tell the yeah. audience a little bit about, about, uh, the property you have in Nigeria and, the, uh, uh, how they relate to the, sure. to the surrounding uh, surrounding um, projects. So we, you know we, we've got a very interesting and unique situation. I guess people feel that way about their projects, uh, and that's why they're in them often. Uh, but our our situation is really exciting. So we have eighteen hundred square kilometers, just over, um, in the middle of the uh, Tim Rasoy Uranium Basin in, in Niger. Um, our properties were owned by Arriva slash Arano. It's French government, French state owned, uh, you know, uh, uranium nuclear giant. Um, and, uh, they relinquished those licenses along with all their exploration licenses, uh, in the after, after Fukushima, you know, the political issues, financial problems for the, all these uranium companies, but Arano and slash Arriva in particular, they exited exploration in Niger after Fukushima. And our local partners uh, in Niger, West Africa, their group, they grabbed these properties. And uh, the reason is, about to tell you, is they are right in the middle of uh, the action. Um, uh, our northern, so we have four four properties, all approximately 450 square kilometers. So aggregating just over 1,800 square kilometers. The northernmost one is right in between on the structures. Uh, right in between Arano's Imereran, which is Africa's largest uranium deposit. It's maybe not talked about as much because it's it's private. It's owned by the French government. They, they you know it's not a public company, so it doesn't get promoted. But Africa's largest uranium deposit. It's right there. We are a few kilometers to the north on the structure that hosts 
that deposit. To our north is Goviax and Matawela. In fact, the Matawela Fault that hosts the Matawela deposit goes off to the north um, northeast, and it converges with the Arlet Fault, which hosts Imararan. They converge inside our license. Um, Arriva Arano did a lot of exploration on this license and had big plans for it. Um, they were going to do intensive exploration, you know, 2012, 13, 14, etc. Uh, 65 drill holes planned at the intersection of these faults where the Goviex fault called the Go meets the Imararan fault. This is Matawala fault and Arlet fault. And, uh, but they never got to it. So our guys grab this license. Uh, we have the plans, we have uh, Arriva's data, Rano's data, and uh, so that is, you know, priority one uh, for our future exploration. So that's just an example of what we have. There is uranium there. We've uh, There's historic drilling uh, that's intersected uh, uranium. People can look at our, on our, go on our website, uh, myriaduranium.com, et cetera, and see the maps, and, and uh, the red hits are over 100 ppm near surface. So that's an example. That's one license. We have another license a little further south at the intersection of the Azusa Fault and again the Arlet. These are just, this license is just a few kilometers south of Imararan, um, Arano's Imararan, and to the west of Global Atomics DASA project. And uh, also historic drilling by Arriva. Uh, we have that data. We have some really, ex really interesting seismic that uh, you can't shoot anymore really, but uh, provides us with lots of insights into hopefully how to find another global atomic DASA style uh, deposit uh, within our, it's called AFUDE is our license. And so that's our second license. Uh, you know, we have big plans for that. Further south, our final two licenses are called Tagait 2 and Tagait 3, and they're a little bit uh, earlier stage. Uh, Arriva had, did less work on, on them. They did some drilling. They encountered uranium. We're on the key faults, surrounded by uranium, uh, uh, anomalies and uh, and even some uranium deposits. The Chinese mine as a leak is down to the uh, southwest of us, not not far away. So we're right in the center. We're surrounded by uh, Arano Zimmerarin, Africa's largest deposit. Then on the other side of us, very close, is Global Atomics DASA. Uh, we've got Matawela. This is uh, Goviex's Matawela project. We've got Somer, Komenak, these are Arano producing mines. One has just been uh, uh, shut. They've got, we've got a beautiful Arano mill uh, there that is operating and just can take feed from everybody. We're, we're, liter we're literally surrounded and immediately adjacent. We can't get closer to some of the world's top uranium deposits. And uh, we're on structure. That's a summary of what yeah. we've got. <clears throat> so you have been um, pretty high, high profile uh, neighbors where uh, maybe most people have, uh, have heard of the... Uh global atomics um, data, but yeah. um, <clears throat> there were recently some news from uh, Orano um, and considering they're, um, they're private, maybe many people haven't picked up on the news, but um, they yeah. are actually, um, they are doing some test work for um, finding uh, that you are in the project as an ISR. And do you want to speak a little bit about uh, how that uh, affects your uh, evaluation of, of your, uh, your projects? Yeah, it, it, this is a, it's, it's very exciting for us. Um, this was announced maybe a month ago by Arano. Uh, we knew that they were doing hydrological testing uh, at, the, at their project site. They've been doing that for a few years. They keep it very low-key, discreet. They don't talk about it. We've been wondering why they've been trying to meet with us. We, met, we, we took meetings with them in Cape Town, South Africa early this year, met with them in, um, uh, in Toronto, Etc. We have the license that's just adjacent to uh, Imerer, and we're a few kilometers north, like I said. And the way the the, the terrain goes, and the aquifers, etc., go maybe into our license, relevant for ISR. Um, so what they what they've done now a month ago is is Orano announced an 85 million euro, call that 115 million Canadian investment in in situ recovery testing. Uh, so they, I mean, this is the choice of words, but this is a massive investment in in situ uh, recovery of this deposit. So the Imerera deposit, depending on where you do the cutoff, is around 700 ppm, it's 384 million pounds of uranium, again, depending on 
how you slice it, but 384 million pounds of, of uranium, 700 ppm near surface. If it's amenable to in situ recovery, and if, you know, I think I, we could say it, it's a really good chance of this because they've been doing test work for a few years and now they're going to invest $115 million uh, in, in continuing this. Uh, you know, this is a really big endorsement of that deposit, the geology, uh, you know, the uranium deposit that is there. And we are right next door on the same fault, you know, and that, when that, that fault then meets the Matawella fault that goes to GoVX, uh, you know, no wonder they have big plans for our area. So it's extremely relevant. Uh, you know, what we call the area where the, those faults merge, Imerera North. And, uh, you know, Reba had plans to drill it. And, uh, you know, we hope we can make a similar type discovery um, to Imerera. Uh, that would be, of course, uh, ideal and amazing. And if in situ is working 10 kilometers to the south um, and they're making this massive investment, then, uh, you know, you can draw your own conclusions about how valuable, valuable and relevant that is uh, to us just to the north. And we have, we have yeah. uranium there. You can see on our maps, it's historic you know, uranium hits. So we just need to do proper drill, proper drilling. Arriva did regional scale, uh, you know, shallow holes a kilometer apart that are vertical just to sort of you know, looking for roll front uh, sandstone style deposits. Um, and uh, uh, now we need to intensify the um, exploration in the key areas. Yeah. It is a pretty, pretty small sector. So um, $115 million in just uh, test uh, field work is, uh, is, is pretty significant uh, amount for uh, for this industry. And um, I guess it's... Um, it is. If it had been... A, it's huge. If it had been... A, yeah, it's huge. If it had been a public company, this would have been a much, much uh, bigger story. But it uh, kind of uh, goes under the radar uh, since uh, Orlando doesn't do any uh, public uh, interviews and uh, that kind of stuff. You got it. I mean, this is a secret. Uh, well, it's not secret because they've announced it, but it's a. I mean, this is for people who follow this is very exciting news. Kazakhstan, of course, produces a lot of its uranium by by in situ recovery, um, and it's when it works, it's very cheap. The economics are transformative. Um, the rest of Niger has been underground mining and open pit, um, and you need higher grade. And, uh, um, you know, but if you can get it, if, if you can make in situ work, it's, it's extremely exciting. Yes. I should, I should mention and, uh, a caveat. You, you need to be careful with in situ. You have to be caught, uh, conscious of the local, uh, issues, aquifers, environmental, et cetera. Uh, and so, Everybody has to keep an eye on that and work with the local people to, to make sure it all works. So that's something that's a that's an important issue. But uh, we'll follow, we'll track that and how that works for uh, Arano going forward. Yeah, yeah. and then um, Arano obviously it's a, it's a state owned um, by the French. Um, it's yeah. now owned by the French government, um, and I guess uh, that. The time when you did the deal um, of this property, um, there was a lot of uncertainty about the, the future of the, the French um, homegrown and nuclear uh, buildups. But that has definitely changed uh, within the last uh, couple of years. And uh, they're now uh, not only keeping the existing reactors, uh, but they're also yeah. talking about uh, building out uh, a massive program, which uh, you can see yeah. uh, why they're. There's a reason why they are spending this much money. Uh, in, uh, they need the a potential. secure supply. Absolutely, yeah. Niger and Niger is one of the few places. I mean, they have to joint venture in Kazakhstan and even in Canada and elsewhere. Uh, you know, they have to joint venture all over the place with these smaller stakes. And will they get deprioritized by the in Kazakhstan, for example, in favor of the neighboring Chinese? You know, uh, physical physical uh, stockpile buildups in Kazakhstan, China. Elsewhere, uh, if you're joint venturing, uh, you're, uh, I mean, you're, it's, it's worked for, for decades, but I think the French are, they have their area. They have a beautiful mill. They've got, uh, you know, world-class deposits in Niger. I think they, I believe this is my, you know, they're going to, they're really going to focus and invest in Niger is my, is my view. Yeah. And so is and everybody the, else. They, so is everybody yeah, else going to be the hot, um, hot spot. Yeah, Niger is, uh, in my opinion, is um, coming up uh, as a very hot uh, district because um, they have yeah. they have all the infrastructure there, and um, 
yeah. the French seem very uh, determined to to stay in country and uh, expand their their uh, their uh, production uh, in country. Yeah. They have the mills. Uh, they have they have been operating in the country there for uh, yeah 20, 20, 30 years now. Yeah, at least. I mean, maybe even since the fifties, nineteen fifties. So it could be yeah. could be even longer, a long, long time. And and yeah. you know they've they've, they've had a uh, some difficult uh, times over the decades with the, with the local Nigerians and the government. So obviously the French colonial history, the legacy, uh, the dynamics have been lots of stress and lots of issues. And I think everybody is happy to have the Australians, the Canadians. Um, I mean, especially the Canadians are there, and that takes uh, the pressure off. You know, takes the pressure off the French. It. It enables the explorer types, the Canadians and Australians, to come in and make new discoveries, like we saw with you know, Global Atomic um, and DASA. And it really is going to make the make the context there, the, the environment, a lot healthier for everybody, um, instead of it just being a dynamic between the French and the government. Uh, now you've got lots of other companies there. You have other producers, um, uh, and uh, and you know a lot of excitement. So this is this is very healthy, and I think the French are excited about it. I want to mention that uh, I, you know, it's kind of if you're in the business, it's a bit of a tragedy and also uh, amazing the way things can change. You've got the Germans shutting down their their most beautiful, amazing reactors uh, that are you know cutting edge, best reactors in the world. From my point of view, a lot of a lot of people agree it's a tragedy. Um, and not only that, you've got a hundred thousand approximately, you know, nuclear engineers and related scientists, engineers in Germany that are world class, you know, among the very best. And what are they going to do now? Um, and you've got France, who've gone the other direction, and they're going to—they're, you know, they're—they're they're going to expand their nuclear fleet, and they're going to train up. It's France now training up tens and tens of thousands of nuclear scientists and engineers, et cetera, and they're going to be a real powerhouse. Very exciting time, for France. A uh, bit, bit tragic for Germany, but also maybe we can hope that in a few years Germany you know, reverses course and uh, resurrects its uh, sector. I, I hope so. I know lots of other people hope so too. So let's see. Yeah. So you are at early stage and you say you plan on doing uh, geophysics uh, on the property next to um, Imbararen. Um, yeah. How how about the other projects? When uh, when are you planning to, uh, to do geophysics? Uh, and uh, is there any uh, actual... Um, Drill, um, drill, um, drilling pro- planned for the um, properties uh, in the near term. Yeah, great. Okay, so I'll just recap uh, what we have already. We have historic Arriva data. They did twenty four thousand meters of drilling across our properties. We have that data. We have their historic airborne geophysics. They did. And we also have some of their ground uh, data. That they did and surf. You know, in terms of geophysics and geochemistry mapping, etc. So we already have a data package. It's a, that's very high quality from Arriva. Layering that on top of that, starting in a few weeks, we are doing a very tight spaced, high resolution uh, drone mag and geophysics. Uh, this is 50 meters, 50 meter spacing. And we are doing the area where the faults merge north of Imeraren, the fault that hosts Manuela, and then just north of the, of the Arlet, we're on the Arlet fault where the, uh, North of Imeraren, where those faults merge, is that priority area that Ariva had lots of uh, holes planned uh, at. And so we're doing uh, drone mag there. We're also doing a drone mag program close to Global Atomics DASA on the fault that hosts DASA, and where that fault merges with the, again the Arlet fault that goes to uh, Imeraren just to the north. So those two areas uh, we're starting in a few weeks. We're doing drone mag. We're going to follow that up uh, within the next few months with ground electrical methods. This will be IP and or AMT, and that is to get subsurface uh, information. Um, so we're going to have our high resolution drone mag uh, IP slash AMT, and we're going to have all the historic Arriva data plus some seismic, which uh, Arriva shot I think around 2008, 2009, which is, gives us tons of insights. That's just down from uh, DASA. Like, it's really hard to shoot that these days. It, uh, uh, so we're extremely um, lucky to have that. And the fact that Ariva did that is very expensive and uh, 
but we have great penetration. We're going to layer all this information and figure out where the uranium traps are, but we hope our uranium traps on the Azusa fault down from DASA and, um, and, uh, so pick drill targets. So we've got, you know, near surface targets that are, are, uh, going to be analogous to Imararan. This is if you drill, you know, top 300 meters, which is what the French did for decades. And then now we know with global atomic stasa that deeper may lie very high grade, um, you know, uh, uranium, uh, like DASA has. And so we're kind of going for both. So this is our plan. Uh, we've got the historic data. We've got drone mag coming up, electrical methods, IP, AMT. October 1st, we will have, this is our current plan. October 1st, we will have our, uh, drill targets and hopefully drills are turning October 1st. And we're going to be going for, uh, you know, looking for another Imararan just north in our Imararan North zone. Uh, we're going to also drill deeper and look for global atomic DASA style deposits there. Also further south, just down the fault from global atomics DASA, where we have really good historic data, including the seismic, uh, we're going to be targeting to, uh, try to find another DASA deposit. So, and I mean, this is just, we have 1800 square kilometers. It's a huge land package. There's lots of, there are lots of other targets. Some just as exciting as these. Uh, so it's really hard to, uh, you know, it's like an embarrassment of riches, et cetera. But, um, yeah, you know, step by step, we're a small company. We, we need to, uh, we need to take it step by step. So we're doing that. We have a lot of land that is very interesting. So, I'm, you know, I have a feeling we'll end up, um, you know, the, uh, getting some help joint venturing and uh, such to, uh, in the future with some of our other, other areas that are highly prospective and will be exciting for, uh, for other groups to come in and help us, uh, advance. Yeah. It is, uh, definitely, um, a district that's, uh, heating up, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, global atomic. Uh, they actually are in the process of uh, of the uh, well, they have started um, the mine construction and uh, you know one hundred million dollar investment from Rano and yourself yeah. doing um, starting up real program. Um, so it's um, definitely uh, definitely a district that's uh, that's uh, very very uh, going to be active for years to come. I think so. I I. I... I think so. I mean, it, it's also, uh, people worry about security that's, that's brought up, uh, regularly. I mean, the surrounding countries have all sorts of, uh, difficulties, but Niger itself, it's, everybody's working hard to make it. I mean, it's got the uranium. It, it's supplied, uh, the United States, America's biggest utility with stable supply of uranium since 2007. The French, of course, are very focused on it being a stable, secure supply. Um, politically it's, 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 it's good for the region. Um, and the United States largest air force base in Africa is in the middle of the uranium basin places. I mean, they're, they've got the thing, uh, uh, you know, they're focused on security there and, um, you know, and stable, uh, supply of uranium. So it's, it's, it's really reassuring from that point of view as a foreign investor, you know, everybody's focused, these big powers focused on keeping it stable and a good place to invest, um, government is is really on side with foreign investors and, uh, and the Iranian companies very exciting place yeah, I, I think uh, I think it missed missed by many investors the the importance of uh, both the, uh, the French and presence of both French and American law and military bases yep. so, um, so we have um, you have the French uh, um, there you have the uh, Canadians uh, the you and the global atomic yes um, the Chinese have uh, all yep have had the operating mine they had some trouble so um yeah, that's right it's a bit uncertain insert, yep. insert, uncertain if, if they are going to start up but uh, <laughs> and uh, even the russians have, uh, have been in the country and uh, i know they have a presence there so small even though they, they don't have any yep. active exploration at, um, at the at the moment that's right yeah no it's good it's it, you know for 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 your viewers who who remember newfound gold in newfoundland and their amazing oh. discovery. That whole district exploded over time, right? I mean, they made, there's some monster gold uh, discoveries made in Newfoundland. And then the district just has turned into, uh, you know, a, a place of focus with massive discoveries, one after the other, and uh, lots of investment. I mean, that's how we see Niger. This is just 
just getting going. Um, lots of uranium there. Uh, hopefully, we make uh, some really big discoveries, and hopefully, our friends are the other there are the other companies around there do too. We want we want everybody to win there, and for it to turn into the number one place. You know, Kazakhstan has its issues, right? It's uh, uh, you know a, a really good and you know fantastic place for for uranium mining and uh, Kazakhstan Prom, et cetera, is doing well. Um, uh, but it's got its issues of transport, uh, logistics. Uh, it's in the middle of China, Russia. Uh, it's got uh, uh, things about it that make you need to di diversify. Niger is, you know, is is going to be very exciting. It's going to be the world's second largest producer in a few years. You know, it's a very good chance it will be the world's second largest producer of uranium. Yeah, and uh, and uh, more importantly, the. The, the the market uranium market is uh, it's kind of uh, transforming into a slightly bifurcated market uh, where uh, Russia and uh, China are relying a lot on the Kazakh material coming yeah. from um, Kazakhstan Prom, uh, while uh, the West uh, turn to Canada and uh, maybe some American uh, startups, but uh, but uh, the African projects are kind of uh, up for grab from uh, from all. Uh, all sides with that. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it's got big advantages. It's right there for, uh, uh, you know, it's 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 in a, it's in a really good spot. Yeah, geopolitically. Yeah. All right, uh, Thomas. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for coming on the show and uh, sharing your story. And it's, uh, it sounds like you have a very busy uh, year ahead of you. So uh, it yeah, would, uh, would be great to have you on uh, again when uh, yeah. when have started up your geophysics and um, it, uh, it will be, we'll be it would be uh, it would be very exciting to see some med drills turning in uh, in Nigeria. That's great. Well I look forward to it. Yeah we'll see you again for sure.